Welcome back to Minish Cap. Today we are heading to Mount Cornell because there is no Death Mountain around here. It's instead of mountain named after us. Ah. Why not? The rest of this area we have to come back to much later in the game. Hmm, yes, yeah, mysterious. Bit of a telegraphed hole in the wall. Yeah. So you might have been wondering where that Deku scrub at the beginning went. He went down here. Look, I'm so sorry. Oh my god. A deluxe bottle? Of course. All right. You might be thinking, yeah, I'm going to go back to that fairy fountain I was just at. No, you need an open bottle to get up the mountain. Yeah, it's kind of required. I ain't got nothing. Get out of here. I ain't got nothing, and you're taking that from me, too! <laughs> Look at all these rocks. They also have stuff under them. They're basically just harder to break grass. Yeah. And there's- it looks like a clay patch in the wall. You'll want to remember those. But here's the mountain, it's got two parts, the base and the mountain itself. And this is teaching us about the plants. As you can clearly see, we need to use them for walking. And also they're color-coded. Blue water goes to the blue plants, and later there's a green plant, and we need a special green water. It'll make sense when you see it. I told you I got nothing! Except another house. Okay, okay, you got me. This is in case you came here before going to the guy who sold you the bottle. Yeah, I actually have nothing, I, I told you. You also want to remember the Deku scrubs because you also trade kinstone pieces with them later. You kinstone with everything in this game, pretty much. If it doesn't want to kill you, you could probably kinstone with it. It's like, theoretically, it could, because sometimes there are characters who you can fuse with who will disappear later in the game, and their fusion gets transferred over to another NPC. So, like, theoretically, you could fuse with everyone. Then again, who they transfer to is definite. Like, it's not literally everyone, but... For example, the cat. You could kinstone fuse with a cat. Here's me thinking about it. It actually just leads you to his treasure trove of dead mice. <laughs> well, one of them made a rupee. This stuff is prickly, and I think it can hurt you. Mm -hmm. At least one of those patches has a secret under it. Hint, hint. Uh, now we got red choo-choos. They're exactly the same as the green ones. I think they poke down a little faster, maybe. Also feels like they're more likely to drop hearts. Hmm. Let's see what the rock looks like. So if you see a little platform with a hole on it, it's probably a portal. Yep. Is that, like, jelly? Or is he just bouncing on crystals? I think that's those uh, bismuth crystals. I don't know, I'm making stuff up. <laughs> that's not what bismuth looks like. I know. Uh, little car wigglies, that's what I think of mess. They peel out when you anger them. Yeah, sometimes they need donuts, it's funny. They'll just go around in circles. Like, hey, why'd you do that? Uh-oh. Nope. Not what I meant to do. This is special Mount Cornell mineral water. You only need one jar of it, but... It's important to remember. It's a really hot jar. He's passing it back and forth between his hands right now. 
thankfully, unlike the hot spring water from, I think, Majora's Mask, I know Twilight Princess. It's not on a timer. Right, yeah, it's Majora's Mask because you're using it in the Frozen Mountain area and Twilight Princess, yeah, also. Twilight Princess is like a big barrel of it, though. Mm-hmm. It might be both. I don't know. It's been a while. Is it obvious I haven't recorded Twilight Princess HD yet? <laughs> oh, I like that game. I know people hate it. So these guys are the Helmosaurs. Not Pip Loops, sadly. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> They're little birds underneath this gumbo. <laughs> I love their look too when you post like, holy shit! And you can't hurt them if you can attack them from behind. Sure, that sounds like a great idea. That's one thing I do like about Ezlo, he's kind of cheeky sometimes. Yeah, that's why he's the number two most annoying and not the number one. So you can use him as a flotation device when you come across those whirlwinds. In case of a water landing, Eslo can be used as a flotation device. Hmm. This is a little side thing. But it's good to come here, too. Just stand next to it, why not? <laughs> I think I blanked for a second. I don't know what happened there. Yay, goodies. Oh, this is a good cave. What is he grabbing on? I don't know. He really likes your belt. Oh no, my belt buckle is ugly now. Ah, those are the little flies that we see when we're minish-sized. You absolutely overkilled them. Have you ever killed a fly with a sword? It's not easy. <laughs> Aha! That's like the one dust secret. It's not something you blow up, it's a place you drop down to when you're minish-sized. Mm-hmm. Let's try it again. <laughs> I'm still not sure. I felt like maybe the bomb just didn't have a big blast radius. Maybe this time. Maybe if I shove it halfway in the hole. Just checking. I'm pretty sure that's the only dust secret. Mm -hmm. One annoying thing that can happen. When you're minish sized and you're around the portal, until you've gotten a decent distance away, the R button will just make you big sized again, and when you're trying to roll away, that's annoying. But no, it's another little minish house. There's quite a lot of them that just live underground. It's a neat bit of world building. Hey, let's rob this guy. <laughs> I feel like they all have red kinstone pieces, too. Whoops. Sorry, just fell. I walked into the spike thing. We saw you kill our brothers. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a that's a lot smaller than it looked. Yeah, so Gunkle apparently follows Ant-Man rules where <laughs> when he's small, he can lift things bigger than he is. So just bring it over the hole, and then when we grow big, we can drop the mineral water on it. Thankfully, it's not too big of a backtrack back to the mineral water if you didn't know about this. Mm hmm 
But thankfully, that's also the last time we need the mineral water. There is one optional thing much later in the game, though. So I like that parts of this song call back to the Death Mountain from Link to the Past. Part of the music, at least. Yeah. The underlying uh, bass line, I think, is ripped from that. So I was clearly looking for bombable walls, and I just walked right past the most obvious one. Right. Oh no, now there are beetles under rocks. If you get close enough, you can pull the rocks off of them, but most cases you won't be able to. It is fun to kill enemies with them. Right. It's like ripping the house off their back and smashing it right into them. Nah, this is the path forward. This is an area where bomb drops are pretty rare. Most cases, they're gonna be rare. This is one game where you might actually need to buy bombs from the store. Well, there's some. This isn't terrible. And we got a new type of chew. You get close to them, they turn into spikes. You can rush up to them. Get out of here. The Tektites are pretty easy to kill, too, because they just stand there, and when they're about to jump, they telegraph it by just looking in a direction. I love that they, like, eyeball you. It's kind of funny. The fact that they cared enough to animate the little eyeball. I love it. Yeah. Can't go up the crenel wall until I get the ability to climb that gravelly wall we've been seeing. That's actually where the Minish are, directly north of us, but we can't get up there. At least not from here. Can't get that from here. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> Get in the blast. Get in the blast. Damn it. Uh oh. That sounds about right. Climbing style. All the ladies love it. You are more likely to get a date if you don't fall on your ass. Right. So now we can climb the wall. It's a bit slow, you can't really speed it up, but you don't climb too often, so it's not really a problem. I will say, thankfully, there's not a lot of climbing in this game. Ooh, mysterious. It's important to remember this room, because you got to come back for it later. Once you have the ability to hit two switches at once. It's kind of the same with that area where we saw the first Deku scrub. There was that block we couldn't push. Mm -hmm. Because we need two people. So back down to the Mount Cornell wall. And Ezla's not going to help push it. I mean, come on. <laughs> if you can't walk, he's not going to be able to do that. It's an excuse. It feels like almost a waste to not draw in his beak just bouncing behind you constantly. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Like, he's hanging his neck, his head is upside down. Like, ah, 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 ah. You're running around. Got googly eyes, his tongue's hanging out. <laughs> so do not worry about all the rocks coming down. I only ever got hit by them once, and it was the very last time I ever came here. 
And I was just looking for a secret that I don't think I found. So, they're really not a danger. Come on, every single sign that warns you about bombs. Ooh, this is a great fairy fountain. Whoops. I gotta throw a bomb in there. Yay, yay for plot powers. Ooh, she's pretty. And a thing. I... Oh, it's this classic thing again. You gotta be honest. We didn't throw in any special bombs. You are honest, and I am injured. Yeah. Nice. So we got a bomb bag upgrade already. Yeah. And later we'll get the bow and arrow, but the arrows and the bombs you can max out at 99. Nothing here. I feel like there will be a kinstone secret that pops up there later. The funny thing is climbing sideways is much faster than climbing up. Yeah. It's like you're panicked trying to get out of the way of the rocks. Which are so easy to avoid in this game. Ah. Uh, the blue tectite. Blue tectite is a little harder to hit. Because it keep moving. Ah, damn it. And there's a weird hole in the ground. That's another kinstone thing. I'm gonna ignore the little area immediately below. Usually you wouldn't want to. Turns out it didn't matter for me. Oh, wow, suddenly it's raining. Just suddenly. Crazy weather we're having, huh? Now the texture on the ground actually does block you from continuing that way. And this is like the one instance where it actually does matter. But yeah, because we're tiny, the raindrops will hurt us. But only in this specific little tunnel. Right. Out here, I'm fine. So in order to get across here, don't worry about that rock immediately above me. I just need to push this rock. Now, like with a lot of the pushing puzzles in all the other Zelda games, the key to this is to never push it in a place where you can't move it out again. Mm -hmm. Never put yourself into a corner or up against the wall. So right there, push it down. Don't push it up against the wall. Any day now. <laughs> it's a bit slow, but it's not hard. Yeah. And that rock is just there. I guess it's a red herring. Ah, crap. <laughs> gotcha. Blah. <laughs> just pause. Oh, shit. Right. It'd be so much better if you could shoot the mask back at them. Yeah, I don't know why the ghost jar eats them. Another pushing puzzle. This one looks more complicated than it is. Yeah, there's only so many rocks that actually move. We actually need to push that one at the bottom, then go back around and start pushing them around. If you did it in this order, you would probably push that other one first. The P hat is stunned for a second after you hit him. Like, did he just. Oh. He dies. I'm really trying to grab the rock off that beetle, but it didn't work. to fight him. Okay, maybe we do. <laughs> Cut 
hits the mushroom. Smacks you in the face. Out of the way. Oh no, I didn't get rid of the jars. You could probably also just pull the other mushroom over. Mm-hmm. That'd be the faster way. First time I played this area gave me a lot of hearts from the red shoes. I don't know why it didn't now. I'm not sure what the trigger is to actually get hearts from them. I don't know. Could be a certain way to kill them. I wasn't doing anything different though. Could just be you had good RNG. Or maybe it's just like these specific ones. The game's being kind to you right now. Boy, that fight against the Helmosaur kind of sucked. Yeah, right. Where are the Gorons? The answer is in our hearts. <laughs> they're not here. In a kennel. Like puppies. Same rule. Don't push it up against the wall until you're at the end. That one's kind of a freebie. Yeah. I mean, if you've played any Zelda game, you can figure that one out. And here we go. Yay, we made it. What are those bugs supposed to be? I always thought they resembled like a ladybug, but they've got pointy rear, I don't know. Yay, Minish. And we got a new type. Ting along, tongue along. Hmm. So I think the mountain Minish are pretty cool. They're all very like steampunk. They've got goggles and they're hardy. They look fun. And I just love digging. Just love to dig and sing. I mean, come on. I mean, Ting. Ting and Tong. And it's seven. Seven dwarves. Oh, I call that. Uh -huh. Weird detail to remember, but it is worth remembering it. Yeah. There's seven of them. Plus Malari, so there's eight of them. That guy's just skipping. He's having a good time. These uh, mountain minish kind of remind me of the Subrosians. They're just happy and chill. And probably very warm. Yeah. Now Malari, he's the big minish. He's the size of two thumbs. The rest of those guys, they don't deserve it. They all suck. How did you hear that? Is there a carrier pigeon network? Like... The elder can scream really loudly. The thought of a tiny little minish trying to tape a letter to a huge pigeon is hilarious to me. <laughs> Well, we haven't seen it yet, but the Minish can actually talk to animals. Right. Maybe it's just like, dude, hold still. Right. And the bird ate him. So they'll be at that while we go and take care of the next dungeon, which is luckily right outside. Uh, guys, I think the sword's about to explode. 
Yeah, me, uh, okay. I mean, I'm not gonna tell a smith how to do his job. <laughs> if it hurts, you're doing it right. They've all got long blonde hair. Like me. But I am very far from a blacksmith. Or a miner. By the powers of explosion. Hey, that baffles me. <laughs> <laughs> he says that every time. So remember last time when I said all the dungeons were minish sized? I was wrong. Yeah, but we will be becoming minish sized in this one anyway. Yeah, I don't know why I thought that. For some reason, I remember. Maybe it's just because of the most memorable dungeons to me are the minish sized ones. Oh, well. Anyway, next time, the fire dungeon. The Cave of Flames. Uh, that sounds better. And it's what it is. It's the ice dungeon, by the way. 